Powell. This is uh, Kaiopua Fife with the Kiwani Foundation bringing you another segment of Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. And we're, for those of you who recognize it, we're right in the midst of the metropolis here in Honolulu and proud to have with us today Polani Vaughn. We've been trying to hook up for quite a while. Polani, <laughs> uh, good to see you. Good to see you. Mahalo for making the time. My we're pleasure. glad to My see pleasure. you here, oh, wow. and, and the reason we are where we are today is uh, it seems that Palani has become, as a kuleana, which has uh, been brought to him, uh, regarding this area of town, which is what we're going to talk about, yes. and uh, maybe some of the historical facts that relate to this area, and looking forward to what can happen with it in the future, I guess, huh, Polanyi? All right, this yeah. is, uh, we're in Kaka'ako. And when I was a young boy, very young, many Hawaiians lived in this area. And I remember the, we were act, actually in two city blocks, I guess, uh, of size, <clears throat> uh, vacant lots that at the Waikiki end is uh, Mother Waldron Park. And I used to go to a preschool just down the way. And so I remember my mother driving me, in, in, and I was only three, four years old, but mm -hmm. I can still remember all of the Hawaiian people who lived in here. Yeah. So many. And um, what was the, was there different buildings here at the time? Were there houses or, or what? Houses, most, yeah. yeah, mostly residential. residential yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, no high rises to speak of, of course, right. nothing. Right. Nothing was high rise in those days. Yeah. The most would be a second story. <laughs> Anything off the ground was a, was a high rise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I, um, I have a vivid childhood memory of this area. Mm -hmm. um, I be became better acquainted with uh, history um, as it, as this area relates to uh, uh, King Kamehameha the Third, and probably more significantly um, because more people identify me with the uh, King Kalakaua mm -hmm. era of history. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, discovered that this property, which is owned by Kamehameha Schools, formerly uh, Kamehameha Schools Bishop Estate, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> I came to the, I had known about this area, the history of it, but I, it became a more meaningful uh, plot shouldn't even plot uh, uh, an area to me because of the um, what had happened on the 110th anniversary, January 17th, the 100, 110th anniversary observance of the overthrow of Queen Liliuokalani. And as I was uh, telling you uh, uh, earlier, I served on the Centennial Onipa'a Committee mm -hmm. of 2003 excuse me, of 1993. Uh, I was at the time working for our Governor John Wahea, the first mm -hmm. governor of Hawaiian ancestry. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> I served him in, in a cultural way mm -hmm. on, on several fronts, this being one of them, uh, the Onipa'a Committee. But what happened is, um, in 20, 10 years later, Mel Kalahiki was wanted, who was also on the committee at yeah, the time, sure back in 93, uh, called me and says, you know, we're, as uh, he had said to me 10 years earlier, he wanted to remember the overthrow every, ten, every decade after that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I was uh, out in front of the palace on King Street uh, waiting for him to arrive with the rest of the party and participants. He had the uh, parking passes, so I, I was... Everybody waiting, waiting, everybody waiting for him, waiting for the party. And, and while I was there, I, I started to recall what had happened in 1993, and mm -hmm. remembering all of our Hawaiians yeah. converging, walking yeah. down uh, King Street, coming mm -hmm. from everywhere, yeah. and, and just entering. Torches lit. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, and, the, and the chanting, the, the, the calls that were you know, being relayed, and, mm -hmm. um, and then, I wrote a song called uh, Voices on the Wind to kind of explain how I come to do things. Mm -hmm. And Voices on the Wind is attributed to 
I feel, to our kupuna. All of us have to be in touch with something in our lives, um, family and whatever. I just, I just have always felt these things. And maybe because we come from kahuna, you know, uh, roots, I, I have no idea, but I've sure. always been this way. I can mm -hmm. feel things right. uh, and I explore them. Mm -hmm. But what I heard was, in my head, was let us not be forgotten. Mm -hmm. And that so first, you know, startled me. And then I started re realizing that this was reference to, it was referenced in my mind to our former Hawaiian nation, mm -hmm. our kupuna, as, as it were, who were the citizens of the Hawaiian, the kingdom of Hawaii, mm -hmm. and who obviously suffered along with our queen with the illegal overthrow mm -hmm. um, of 1893. Mm -hmm. And those of us today who are still living with the, yeah. the remnants of that oh, and, yes, and the impact yes. of it. Yeah. And you know, there's, there's so much that um, we, you know, that was such a pivotal time, very complicated mm -hmm. on so many fronts uh, for our Hawaiian people. Kaui Keauli, King Kamehameha III, Whose, whose government was actually on Maui Island mm -hmm. in the La Haina area mm -hmm. uh, where Moku'ula is. Moku'ula was, is the island that um, his mother was placed on, the, the remains of his mom in mm -hmm. a mausoleum there. Mm -hmm. And um, he left Maui to come here and he was uh, spending uh, what history tells us, raucous years Raucous. Uh, having, having uh, he, he had a little bit of a rebellion in his his own heart. He, you know, the way to describe it is he was uh, became king as a boy and mm -hmm. always had mothers telling him what to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think his his ambition was to be the king. If I'm the king, then yeah. I should be able to rule right. and not have to answer to, mm -hmm. you know, my mothers or my sisters in yeah. this case because his sisters had inherited the. A humano title or or Kuhinanui title. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so he he came here, and his encampment was in an area called Honuakaha, which is this general area we're standing in. And as it's described, you know, I, I was researching it. It was Makai of the Kawaiahao Church mm -hmm. area. Now, how big and vast and small or whatever the limits of Kawaiahao was, no one really can tell because everything is so different today. Sure. But the names are here for a reason. So there's a, a senior home on the, on, in that direction, <coughs> uh, Waikiki of us. Mm -hmm. with, that, the, with the orange. Yeah, that four or five story. Canopies, right. yeah. mm -hmm. And that is called Honuakaha. Mm -hmm. And so that validates or verifies that Honuakaha was indeed in this area. Right. Uh, Street names are very valuable markers. Mm -hmm. uh, as the Pohukaina Heiau uh, on the palace grounds. And this street here, Makai of us, mm -hmm. is Pohukaina. Mm -hmm. um, this street, uh, Mauka, of where we're standing, is Halekawila. Mm -hmm. The street that intersects the two between these two blocks of land right. is called Keave. Mm -hmm. Uh, Halekawila received its name as a marker for uh, a birthing palace that was constructed uh, for Princess uh, Nahiena Ena, who was Kawi Keauli's sister, only sister, mm -hmm. who was Hapai and preparing to deliver the future heir. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the Halekawila was built here, exactly where, I'm not sure, but I think there is a sense of where it is because the kawila wood that was used in the rafters of the uh, Hale, uh, Halekawila apparently came from the wood that, the kawila wood that, that had been in Haleokeave, in Pu'uhonua, Nau Nau. So dismantled and brought over here. Then. Yeah, yeah, when Ka'ahumanu was destroying the temples. The mm -hmm. kahuna had retrieved the wood and other mm -hmm. artifacts and the remains of the, the Kayave dynasty and mm -hmm. retreated them into the 
caves, Mauka. Mm -hmm. The um, wood was brought here, Halekawila was, was uh, constructed. So I have a feeling this Keave Street mm -hmm. is named to, as a marker for that, for where the palace, birthing palace, perhaps was, mm -hmm. and in reference to where the Kawila wood was, was mm -hmm. gotten from, the Haleo mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And um, anyway, while she was birthing, the baby died within a day of, of uh, the infant died within a day or two of delivery, mm -hmm. and Nahi Enna Enna was not doing well herself. So in this, the royal encampment of uh, King Kamehameha III, he ordered that she be taken Mauka, uh, just below the front slopes of um, Puowaina, or Punch Bowl. Uh, in fact, where, the, where Queen's Hospital stands today. Mm -hmm. uh, Queen's Hospital is built um, on a heiau. Now that was, it was built after Kauikeauli's passing mm -hmm. by his Hanai son, uh, Alexander Liholiho became the mm -hmm. IV. But prior to the hospital being uh, conceived and built, there stood a heio called Manamana on the uh, grounds. Kawikeauli, King Kamehameha III, had her order that she be conveyed to Haleuluhe at Nahiena Ena. Mm -hmm. For obvious reasons, uh, the mana of the heio he mm -hmm. felt would uh, mm -hmm. bring her, restore her. Right. It didn't. Um, and so she expired. Uh, at Hali Uluhe. Uh, King Kalakaua, the infant, Kalakaua was born. And uh, although he was had been promised to Chiefess Liliha, the ex-governor of Oahu, mm -hmm. she had fallen uh, in disfavor with the government sometime before that. And um, another chiefess showed up. Her name was uh, Ha'aheo. And it was a little difficult trying to determine who she really was, but I did eventually. She was, she was the governor of Maui, mm. but she was also the sister-in-law of Kawikeauli. She was married to King Kamehameha III's half-brother. Mm. His name was Kaiko, mm. or they say Kaiko, mm. depending. Mm. <clears throat> she arrived at the scene at the time of delivery and took Kalakaua with her mm -hmm. and brought him right here to this spot, at Honuakaha. And um, so now, with the ba with baby infant Kalaka, we're here with the dead chief is Nahi and the end and her dead infant, mm -hmm. and the grieving Kawike Auli, the plan was to return to Maui to place her in the mausoleum on uh, Moku'ula. The problem was that the missionaries had so turned our Hawaiian people against him on Maui, mm -hmm. that the only way he could go back to Maui would be as a married king. And so there was devised the marriage to Kalama, mm -hmm. Chief is Kalama. Mm -hmm. And so all this happened in a matter of, of days because yeah. you have, uh, you know, uh, the, the uh, remains of uh, a chiefess and child and they're not going to last forever. So, you know, it was just, we, they had to move mm -hmm. <clears throat> very quickly. They returned to uh, Onuakaha, and I found uh, amongst the, uh, you know, with the, with the Mahele uh, registry and, mm. and Hawaiians applying, there was one from who lived in Lahaina, and he uh, wrote about uh, remembering the return of, of Kaui Keauli arriving at Maalaya, mm -hmm. and he was describing how they were ordered to cut a swath of trees down so that this this path, like you know, it's like going to an Egyptian movie or a movie yeah. about it, the pharaohs in yeah. Egypt, and you have this wide open expanse and people standing on both sides and, right. and a highway, with, in, in yeah. essence, a highway, a, a real highway, like, yeah. and they pro process down through this and to Mahula. Mm -hmm. So, um, and it, you know, this was so uh, colorful in my mind, just imagining how that. Mm -hmm. How majestic that might have been or must have been. Mm -hmm. So anyway, getting and back and to... And Mokuulu actually has, has been under a recovery program. Yes. And it's being restored, right? Right. I, I was um, uh, uh, working with uh, 
the friends of Mohula in right. the early stages they were fundraising right, and, right. and so I, I know very much about mm. and I stand behind them 100% yeah, sure. of their project I think yeah. it's a beautiful project as I recall there was a baseball field <laughs> baseball field like that, right? the county had the yeah, park yeah. <laughs> filled in what was the lagoon or whatever right, right. yeah so we come back to um, why t t to me this area is so significant uh, to preserve and um, simply because this is there's so few historical areas that identify us identify our time as a kingdom our time as a hawaiian nation mm -hmm. and i think it's so important for us to think about those things because it's so easy to put a building up a high rise and bulldoze yeah. and with that bulldozer you just clear away so much physically but we still believe the, the Aina has our spirit. Yeah. And so, I, um, upon hearing what I felt was the call, let us not be forgotten, I, I just didn't know what to do, except I thought, well, maybe the best way not to forget them would to be, have a monument constructed to the memory of our Hawaiian nation, because how else are they going to be remembered? Mm -hmm. I mean, we have writings and we talk about it, but why not have a monument that would stand for... Something physical. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And something that our people could rally around. Mm -hmm. And it, with that thought, it, it began to grow in my mind. It was, I felt that <laughs> the voices of Kupuna were talking to me. Yeah, you, you were know, getting, you were getting I wake your up orders. from, a, from yeah. a sleep and I go, hey, wait, that's a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> for me, and I think for all of us as Hawaiians, it, it fuels your spirit, you know. Sure. And so I... I invested a call mid-session at the Hawaii State uh, Legislature. And I spoke with then Representative Tommy Waters, a graduate of alumnus of Kamehameha schools, and just verbally over the phone described what I was, what had happened. And he says, come down, let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. And he asked me to um, sit with his uh, administrative assistants and to author you know, a piece, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> which turned out to be um, uh, House Concurrent Resolution HCR number 232. Mm -hmm. And so anyone who has access to, uh, you know, the internet, yeah. uh, you, can, you can download it yourself mm -hmm. and uh, read it for yourselves. Uh, and in it, they asked me to give them a description of what this monument was to look like. Mm -hmm. And at that point, I, was, I still wasn't sure. I, was, mm -hmm. I kept you know, asking the kupuna to mm -hmm. give me an idea. Mm -hmm. It grew in, in the sense that a monument is where, yes, we can come. And, and yes, we can honor our kupuna. But because we stand, we, we always talk about huliaku na na, you know, turn around and look back right. or reflect on the time of our kupuna and, right. and it's it's the whole lesson of a young child growing up has to ask right. tutu or mom you know tell us you know what do you advise right. so mm -hmm. it's that same uh, psychology mm -hmm. uh, Hawaiian Polynesian psychology the uh, legislature decided to call it the uh, monument to the citizens of the former kingdom of Hawaii you know a, a sense of a title I didn't like the former yeah, part yeah, of yeah, it, exactly. but, <laughs> but, Couldn't work on that. Huh? Yeah, I know, but you know, just you know, I just I wanted their support, and the reason for it, although this is Kamehameha Schools land, formerly Kamehameha Schools Bishop Estate lands, right. um, I felt that a persuasive argument would be the fact that that our legislature, uh, along with OHA and DLNR, mm -hmm. all agree that it was a great idea, oh. and in its in its total concept. Mm -hmm. So the total concept would be, and why such a, a, a large area of land, is that the concept would be to have the monument as a centerpiece, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the monument would be surrounded by a complex. Mm -hmm. In the complex you would have, this is this all, and it's open to mm -hmm. further discussion yeah. and development yeah. and yeah. ideas. Mm -hmm. Part of the complex would be a genealogical archival, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, archival repository. research, yeah, yeah. People can bring the genealogies mm -hmm. and have 
against genealogists, those who are recognized in the field, mm. the ability to help verify these, mm. correct them, mm. whatever. Mm. It can be a great service to especially sure. those applying for Hawaiian homes and other and sure. other things, Kamehameha yeah. I mean, schools, sure. you know, admissions. Uh, that was part of it. Uh, having been to the state archives, I know the problems there with records being taken and lost. Yeah. So I thought Kamehameha schools could, in effect, replicate all records, mm -hmm. bring them to mm -hmm. an archival... Yeah, use some current technology to do so. Yeah, an archival facility, right. which is the second part of the... And Mm -hmm. Collaborative, mm -hmm. you know, abilities mm -hmm. with the genealogical society. Mm -hmm. I mean, society, genealogical um, center. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another part of the complex uh, would be for performing arts, uh, Hawaiian performing arts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, another portion of the facility would be a museum mm -hmm. to identify this area, mm -hmm. to identify. Interpret it, essentially. Interpret, yeah. 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 Like I said, it's wide open, and it could, in this performing arts center or portion, uh, it could even be, uh, you know, uh, a concert set. I mean, there's a lot of yeah. land here. Yeah. But performance I, area. Performance area. A, a venue. It, it could also, you're right, it could also mm -hmm. be open air, uh, mm -hmm. pa hula. Mm -hmm. You know, so many things that I think would be wonderful here. Mm -hmm. uh, I can just see this area re-blossomed with, you know, our coconut trees mm -hmm. and oil palms and just about everything that mm -hmm. would identify this area. You know what? And I we would could see we could unpave paradise <laughs> and take yeah. out the parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, and then they probably have to do an archaeological oh, sure. study yeah. immediately. Yeah. But um, so I mean, how long uh, down the road this would be? Yeah. Who knows? But well, I'm, let me ask you because we're we're kind of coming to the end of mm -hmm. this, this segment. Where is this um, resolution at at this point? I mean, has, has it it's has it is it still alive? Does it need to be resubmitted, uh, reconsidered in the next? No, I, next I asked the question. The concurrent yeah. resolution means both houses agreed okay. and it has a life. Okay. All right. So, um, so it's already been it's passed. Oh yeah. Okay. Oha uh, trustees. Back. By, by unanimous yeah. approval, DLNR, mm -hmm. by unanimous approval. Amazing. It was amazing, <laughs> yeah. I was amazed, totally amazed at that time. I have always believed that Hawaii should, sure, we can do build on the visitor industry, mm -hmm. and but they're going the wrong way. They've been going the wrong way. Mm -hmm. The minute I started singing in Waikiki, mm -hmm. we still had the remnants of a true Hawaii then. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it became, I was notified by a hotel Sheraton Hotels, to be exact, mm -hmm. that I was too Hawaiian for Waikiki. I see. And then that that we Hawaiian celebrities were no longer going to be celebrities on the hotel properties. Mm -hmm. That the hotels mm -hmm. would become the celebrities. They will be the thing. Yeah. Yeah. The destination. And resort. so that's you, you, corporate takeover. But times are changing, though. Well, you know. Things are changing. We can, uh, you know, they're improving. I'm hopeful that I, my I've been a proponent of cultural tourism. Mm -hmm. And I really think that when you reach out to people who want to learn, sure. want to participate, yeah. they become a part of Hawaii of in the process. Yeah. I mean, the others who come here, I think are missing out because they wind up on the beaches mm -hmm. and not only enjoying themselves, but they're contaminating the beaches as well with yeah. suntan oils yeah. and yeah. Yeah. bottle caps and all the things that yeah. are being yeah. thrown yeah. around. And obviously, it's gonna take uh, some real community support financial support to make this come well, together, but well, that sounds well, terrific you know, it's, to me. It was just to get their approval of the concept, mm -hmm. because this is state of Hawaii, this sure. is Honolulu. Yeah. But I really am appealing, this is something that Kamehameha Schools could do completely mm -hmm. on its own, mm -hmm. on their own. Yeah. And I think the students can benefit, society, the community will benefit. I think the visitor industry will benefit. Mm -hmm. um, as, I mean, this, our culture and history make this so unique, not just... And our future. And our future, right. For instance, as in Voices of Truth, one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future, Palani Mahalo Nui, thank you so much. Glad we could finally get together. <laughs> we, we finally did Everybody's it, yeah. so busy and on the go <laughs> that uh, I'm glad to, to hear about this. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, hopefully assisting in some way. 
and uh, maybe just having people see this I, uh, I think that's, good. that's a wonderful good. start. People, people need to know, mm -hmm. and uh, very easy to get, get behind something like this. So those of you sitting out there, hopefully uh, can help support in any way you can. Tune in frequently. You know, we have uh, wonderful uh, interviews like this every week, and let's, please stay tuned. Once again, I'm Kaiopua 5. Mahalo again to Polani Vaughn. And on behalf of the Kiwani Foundation and the Hawaii Broadcasting System, mahalo and ahuiho. Mahalo for watching Voices of Truth one-on-one -on -one with Hawaii's future. Watch us on the web 24-7 at VoicesOfTruthTV.com. You'll find all our shows, including this one, in case you want to see it again or share it with family and friends. Also view our weekly video commentaries at FreeHawaiiTV.com. And check out our blog, published daily, at FreeHawaii.info. It's all part of the Free Hawaii Broadcasting Network.